Candace Owens is continuing to take shots at Steven Crowder with this big right-wing media civil war going on. Now, um, we're going to play this. I'm going to talk about another clip from Candace, which is uh, kind of like her blackmailing Crowder. <laughs> I'll talk about that, too. Now, this is the first time I'm watching this clip, so learning about it at the same time as you. Let's dive into it. Um, Candace Owens calls Steven Crowder a socialist. Here we go. Which is why it is not worth us saying anything more, in my opinion. I don't know what the Daily Wire is going to say about it further. But the, the reason why this doesn't really matter is I think that people are really seeing uh, just how nasty what you did was. And I, I think that we, I would hope that you would come to terms with the fact that you owe everybody an apology, that this was never necessary, that you can start whatever company you want. You don't get to step in like a socialist, and it is socialist-like. These are the demands that you hear, and people are trying to establish a union when the Amazon workers have walked out because they have decided that they are worth more, that they should have three-hour lunch breaks. They've gotten their contract. <laughs> yes, working-class Amazon people who get exploited to the hilt who work in, like, really terrible conditions, who are massively overworked, who do backbreaking, incredibly difficult work. Those people, yeah, three-hour lunch is my ass cheeks. They're asking for, like, way more reasonable concerns than that, right? The Amazon union is wonderful for working-class people, so all of a sudden their fake concern about working-class people is out the window. But I love the comparison to Crowder on this front. Crowder got offered a 50 million DZAC contract. <laughs> Seems to me he's got a little less of a beef than somebody making $15 an hour and busting their ass cheeks and barely being able to pay the rent. Jesus Christ, Candace. Oh, my God. Amazon, And they realize that they, they're a lunch breaks for only one hour and that they're required to show up to work. And they think they should be able to work from home for three days a week post-COVID. And they walk out and they want to stage a union. And this, this is the big con. It's Amazon. No, this is the free markets. No. Uh and so we we learned from phenomenal reporting that Amazon drivers and I'm not kidding here they were pissing in their trucks their delivery trucks and they were shitting in bags why because if they took enough time to take a shit break they might get in trouble so you're telling me Candace they don't need a union they don't need the workers to collectively bargain to get a little bit more of a fair deal Jesus Christ. So to Tim Pool, what I would say, and I like Tim Pool, and I think that he is always very kind to all of his guests that he has on his show. But when he says that he doesn't think $50 million is enough, but I would like to say that the free markets will answer that question, right? It doesn't look like anybody's come to him with an offer that's bigger. Okay, look, on that last point, uh, yeah, there's this weird thing going around. I've seen a lot of people repeat this claim. Like, oh, $50 million for him over four years, that's, you know, that's under market value, bro. He can make so much more being independent. Um, I'm here to tell you, now granted it's a little different because I'm in left-wing politics and not right-wing politics, but I'm here to tell you, that's totally bogus. That's totally, he's not going to make more on his own. There is no way. They claim, there's this number floating around, he has 300,000 or 350,000 Mug Club subscribers. First of all, I don't buy it. There's no evidence of that, so that's point number one. Point number two is, when they created Mug Club, it was part of the blaze. And so they own a percentage of that. They might say, like, oh, no, it's not, it's independent. Nonsense. They own a percentage of that. Okay, so it's not true. What they're saying is not true. If 50 million was a phenomenal offer, even with those provisions that Crowder didn't like, and Crowder could have negotiated out those provisions instead of hitting them back with $130 million, which, by the way, shows it, this, the, at the core of this, it is about money to Crowder. He's, oh, no, it's not about money. It's about the younger creator. I'm trying to help the next generation. Bullshit. It is about the money. And you wanted more, and you're not worth more. Okay, but so now let's let's address the bigger the bigger question here, right? Fifty million a fifty million dollar contract to to compare that to exploitation. Given, I mean, if that's exploitation, then like you're you're going against the common sense of like ninety nine point nine percent of the population, <laughs> All right? If you have a, a contract worth fifty million over four years, people are going to be willing to accept a lot of terms with that, of course, because fifty million dollars, right? But it is kind of funny because. Let's keep it real. Crowder, for the first time in his life, moaning and whining about exploitative contracts, like, it is kind of an anti-capitalist notion to say that any contract could be exploitative, right? That is sort of like, hey, hold on. 
So now suddenly you're concerned about labor. Now, in this case, labor happens to be getting paid $50 million, so it's a little different, right? But if you're concerned about labor to any extent here, and you're saying, hey, I was offered these terms, they're not only are they bad, they're also exploitative, and I need to put them on blast, and we need to change the way the system functions. Well, that certainly is not a capitalist notion. How would, what would the pure laissez-faire, unfettered capitalist perspective be? You'd get the, uh, you'd, you'd get the contract, right? You'd get the proposal, the term sheet, and you'd either accept it or decline it or counteroffer and work it out. But certainly what you wouldn't do is start crying and whining and bitching and moaning and acting like uh, this is exploitation, this is ruthless, and we need some rules around this to permanently get rid of certain kinds of provisions of the contract. You wouldn't do that. Now, by the way, if he was using this mindset for good, what he would do is come out and say, hey, when the FTC decided um, no more non-compete clauses, that's based. Because that is an actual exploitative provision that a bunch of low-wage workers have to be subject to. And that is, it's just unfair, right? It's just, you need a third party to step in there and say, hey, this whole kind of provision is, is unacceptable. NDAs is another one, right? Those are still legal in some places. They shouldn't be. Now, Crowder could come out and say, I'm against exploitative contracts, so drop the NDAs, right? People have free speech. They should be able to talk about their experiences. You shouldn't be able to force somebody to sign a sheet of paper that says, hey, you can't talk about any of this stuff. But it's been reported that not gay Jared, who used to work with Steven Crowder, is subject to an NDA by Steven Crowder. So he doesn't have anything to say about uh, those NDAs. In fact, he sports NDAs. He doesn't have anything to say about non-compete clauses. It's only the specific provisions in his $50 million contract that he has an issue with. Well, guess what, Stephen? This is not the most capitalist way to approach this. And it's funny because he's one of the biggest crusaders for capitalism. So in a weird sense, Candace is not entirely wrong here, right? It is the Daily Wire that's more on the free market pro-capitalist side of this debate. It just happens to be the case that since the dollar figure is so high for Crowder, it feels a little ridiculous for anybody to back him, right? And, and that makes sense. But if you have problems, if you say, hey man, there should be certain provisions of contracts are so exploitative, they should be eliminated completely, banned. Well, welcome to leftism, if, if that's your view. You know, because the whole idea is, and you guys know this, the Lochner era of the Supreme Court, what happened? A right-wing Supreme Court said, you have a right to contract. An employer does with their employee. What that means is the government is not allowed to step in as an independent entity to say, hey, these terms are not okay because the employer is exploiting the employee. There's a power imbalance here. The employer has all the power. The employee has none of the power. So we, the government, are going to step in and say, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. That goes too far. You can't make them work six or seven days of the week. You can't say we're never going to pay you any overtime pay. You can't say we're not subject to child labor laws. You can't say we're going to pay them less than minimum wage. To say, hey, these provisions are exploitative, we should have some rules around it. That is a leftist position. Again, the only asterisk in the conversation is that since Steven Crowder was offered $50 million, it feels a little ridiculous to, to you know, whine over specific provisions that are arguably exploitative, right? I don't even think it's clear cut in this instance because the Daily Wire still bears some of the brunt and takes some of the risk. Crowder makes it seem like, I could be charged 110% of what my salary is. That's not true. He's not reading the contract right when he says that. So anyway, hilarious. Now, again, so what we're seeing here is a virtue signaling contest. I'm the most pure right winger. No, I'm the most pure right winger. No, I, we're the uncorrupted right wingers. No, we're the uncorrupted right wingers. No, we represent the movement. No, we represent the movement. And so that's, that's the fight you're seeing now. And this is Candace firing back saying, well, actually, we're definitely the more right wing because you are acting like a socialist. And she's saying, look, the Amazon workers were asking for better contracts. That's socialism. You're asking for better contract. That's socialism. <laughs> oh, yummy in my tummy, baby. Yummy in my tummy. Keep it going. I'm enjoying every second of it.